Welcome back to Experts Only. I'm your host, John Powers. I'm the co-founder of Clean Capital and served as President Obama's Chief Sustainability Officer. On this podcast, we explore solutions to climate change by talking to industry leaders about the intersection of energy, innovation, and finance. You can get more episodes at cleancapital.com. Welcome back to Experts Only. I'm your host, John Powers. Today, we really look at the new frontier in sustainable travel, and we're talking to Christian Mueller-Holst, who is the CEO and founder of Goodwings. Goodwings is a company enabling net zero travel for mid to small businesses, a really interesting business model to help companies, actually like Clean Capital and many of you out there, book and manage uh, a net zero travel strategy in a really simple way. So you can go to goodwings.com to learn more. And as always, you can get more episodes at cleancapital.com. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Thanks for having me, John. Absolutely. I got. A, I think you're probably one of my first international uh, guests. So I'm excited to, <laughs> to have oh, you on. Really? Co- <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you on from Copenhagen. Um, you know, as we were talking offline, you, you guys have a really sustainable, beautiful city over there. Uh, and, and you're really doing some interesting work. So I want to talk about your background. You grew up there, you went into the Danish army, like where sort of in this uh, life experience did you first start to get interested in the issues of climate? Um, to be honest, it's something that I actually often think about. Um, where does this profound interest and motivation come from? I think at the age of four, we started to spend a lot of time in a family cabin in the woods in, on the northern part of Sealand. Um, surrounded by trees. And when you grew up, you appreciate nature. And then I remember in, in, uh, in, in high school, there was this, these initiatives around, you know, save the rainforest. You probably remember as right. well, right? you know, totally, you could yeah. buy the, you could buy certificates and you had them in your, yeah. you know, in your school um, hanging on the wall. And it was uh, something that you couldn't really relate to, but you could, sense that it was a good thing to protect right what, what we what you know what we are part of nature the planet um fast forward to as you mentioned i i was fortunate to be in the danish army for three years as an as an officer reserve officer and after that i knew that i was going to study business and by by coincidence i ended up on the philosophy and business um mix Hmm. So my bachelor's was part philosophy, part business, and this was in 2000, so like 22 years ago. <laughs> so yeah. uh, pre-sustainability, pre-impact, pre-regenerative capitalism, all the things that we are now hearing, we were contemplating about at the time. We were, you know, we were having one class about Aristotle or Locke or you know, the great philosophers of our time, and then we were studying microeconomics. And we were the hippies of that time. We were the ones that were, <laughs> that were challenging the business theories that were just being laid out in front of us. Hey, this is how you should operate. This is how business works. And I remember that we were at that time, you know, challenging the shareholder perspective. Why not stakeholder o- over shareholder only? Right. So, so that was really my entry into this. Um, and then I graduated and immediately after I started my first company, which was in health. And, and that's another story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you are, it's, it's interesting to me because you are sort of a, for lack of a better term, a serial entrepreneur, right? You've, you've you know, you've started things, uh, you've grown them, uh, and now you've made your way into, into helping to solve the climate crisis. Yeah. So where, where did you begin to see for folks that are not as familiar with the impact that travel can have in terms of our greenhouse gas emissions and, and uh, CO2 up, you know, output, you know, why did you see that as a window of opportunity? Uh, and like, how big is the, how big is that problem? Hmm. Um, it's difficult to talk about right now because we've had this global lockdown for two yeah, years, that's but, true. Now, but now we can see travel is returning full force. So yeah. Uh, can, I, worst... can I pause for a second? I mean, I think remember in the middle of uh, the pandemic, the picture started coming out from Delhi when 
uh, or the Taj Mahal, they would show, you know, pre pandemic. Yeah. And then during it's just mind boggling yeah. and, how CO2 has come back. So. And, and like the, the fish return <laughs> in the canals in Venice. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so travel as such travel and tourism is eight, nine percent. So, so to, to, to answer your, your, your original question. That includes business um, travel when you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It does. Yeah. Um, I think when I started Good Wings six, some years ago, um, I knew nothing about travel. And, and to be honest, still to this day, I know very little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm surrounded by good people who know a hell of a lot. All right. <laughs> um, but, but Christian, got... I run a finance company. I, I know nothing about finance. No, okay. I'm just I'll, kidding. I'll... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, and, and that's often how the best innova inno innovations come to life, right? True. You know? <laughs> True. Right. So um, I think um, at the time and still today, none of the big guys in travel are really showing much climate leadership. So what really drove me and drives me today is to challenge the status quo. So we started to look into it um, uh, back then in 2015. And the answer I got every time that I talked to an executive from an online travel platform, a travel company, travel management, they all said the same thing consistently. Well, the clients don't want to pay for it. Right. The demand and is not there. The demand is not there. Um, and, 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 and two, um, we simply don't have the margins. And as a result, we just continue doing business as, as usual. Right and, right. and I simply could not live with that fact. So we started to look into how travel works and especially online travel platforms. And to my big surprise, I found an industry that spends 75% of its revenue on advertising. 60 some billion dollar revenue out of which 45 is being allocated into the same commercials on right. Google, Facebook, TV <clears throat> network. And you see them as well, John. Everyone Absolutely. sees them, you know, hotels.com, booking.com. Yeah. Creating absolutely zero value to you, the traveler, to people or planet. So we thought, what if we could introduce a business model or actually redesign the business model around online travel and find ways of, of growing a, a brand, acquiring clients without spending that much money. So that's really what we do. So Goodwings is, in essence, we've turned a very transactional revenue where you, you, you make money from, you, know, you drive traffic to a website, you convert it into a booking, you get some revenue, and then you spend three quarters of more advertising. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as such, there's nothing. It's a pyramid wrong with scheme. It. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm not religious about advertising. Don't get me wrong, but it's just right. at a time where where we have a lot of technologies in front of us, we know what to do, but we lack finance. Why don't we take this money and use it on something that creates value? So yep. that's what we do. So basically, Goodwings is a platform like any other online hotel platform. You, but the difference is you pay a small subscription as a business or as an individual, and that's our main source of income. And that allows us to take the booking revenue, which is like eight, 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 to, eight to 10% of the, of the hotel price on, a, on any given hotel platform, by the way. And we don't spend it on, on very much in advertising, just a, a, a tiny bit. Most of that money is fully allocated to pay to remove your emissions. Because the guy I met six years ago was right. You don't want to pay extra. You didn't spend two, three hours to find that plane ticket, hotel room as cheap as possible. And then on the checkout say, sure, I want to pay $80 to net zero my flight to Copenhagen, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, so he, when you're, when I'm booking on, on Goodwings, I'm booking, I'm actually booking a hotel, but then you are taking the rest of my travel itinerary and sure. offsetting or trying to offset that travel yeah, itinerary. Yeah, yeah. So we've basically created this um, travel emissions calculator, which is built in into the platform. So you, yeah, once, you, one, yeah. once you subscribe, you get access to the platform. We have more than a million hotels. We have comparable rates with any other major hotel platform. 
So you find the hotel in Copenhagen if you come to visit us, um, but you can't complete your booking without telling us how do you get to the hotel. So there's a, like a widget, you, you click your way through, takes literally three seconds, and we will know how much CO2 comes from your train to the airport, your flight to uh, New York, and from New York to Copenhagen, uh, your taxi from Copenhagen airport to your hotel, and everything in return. So that's your total travel footprint, transfers, hotel, flight, you will be emitting on such a trip around three tons, removing three tons through one of these verified reforestation projects is around $20 per ton. So that's $60. We yeah. are in a position, we are in a position where our business model allows us to actually pay that on your behalf. Yeah, so, so talk about it. So, so that $60 goes, like right now, uh, it goes where? How are now, you guys offsetting? It, it, it goes, well, offsetting really covers two things. It, 80, 90% of offsetting credits are what you can call avoidances. So basically yeah. a climate credit associated with a windmill project or a solar project or a meth methane gas, gas project and tons of other projects, avoiding CO2 to be emitted. So these projects are in most cases, super good, very important. However, the need for adding this ec extra revenue stream from climate credits from those types of projects were, mo were more important 10 years ago, because in most parts of right. the world, it was still <laughs> um, cheaper to build new um, black energy uh, sources. Yeah. So if, if we were to move, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if we were to incentivize the, the transition from black to green, we needed to add another revenue source. So today the situation is somewhat different because the, the efficiency and the cost from green energy is decreasing significantly. So what yeah. is very much needed today is massive investments in projects that are drawing down carbon from the atmosphere. These projects are super expensive. You have tech projects like direct air capture, sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. They are still enormously expensive, around 900 to $1,000 per ton, which is more or less impossible for anyone to pay. Right. And then you have, which is also encouraged by the UN and the Oxford principles for net zero alignment, you have the nature-based Right. Reforestation project. So basically yeah. planting planting trees, but verifying that it takes place. And the verification yeah. part is what makes these projects so so darn expensive. Yeah. And regionally, where is that uh taking place? Where are you guys in working in the Amazon? Um, are you working in Copenhagen? Yeah, like, who, who, uh, who who's your partner on those mm -hmm. and that side of the transaction? So basically the, Currently, we're removing carbon from a project in Uruguay, a small country between Brazil and Argentina. Yep. Um, 21,000 hectares of land, grassland, is being turned into forest. And this project alone is intended or targeted at removing 10 million tons of CO2 in its lifetime, in its, I believe, 30-year lifetime. Um, but, there, I mean, there are more than 1,600 projects, and we are now building our, our uh, removal pipeline because as we can see businesses really picking up for us and more, more and more businesses are signing up on our platform every day to, to be able to travel net zero easy. Um, we are, uh, we're securing a, a, a pipeline. So we have access to removal. Yeah. Right. We, we think of pipeline and clean capital as a pipeline of, of solar projects that we're acquiring. You're looking at a pipeline of projects that you can invest in. Sure. That exactly. are having that offset. Interesting. And it, then how do you identify I'm going to get back to the the demand side and the mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the the private sector side of the the bookings, but how do, how do you align and sort of find those partners in Uruguay or or whatever? Are you is there a uh, a mothership group you're working with, or do you have to find individual projects that you're you're backing? Um, we we do everything. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I personally have a, a pretty big network of people working in this space who are coming to to me and us with opportunities, 
to uh, for, for projects. Um, we also work with agents who source these for us. But we, but to 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 a large extent, we try to cut out the middleman. We we basically want to have as much money going directly to the project owners as possible. Right. Right. Interesting. And geographically, again, is there, are there are you seeing a lot in South America and Southeast Asia? Like, where are you seeing a lot of these projects coming? Um, so, South America, Africa, and Asia is where a lot of these projects are taking place. Um, and that is to a large extent because there are a lot of demands or requirements associated with these verified projects. Not only permanence, is it is the carbon going to be stored in this forest for 50, 100 years right. ahead of us, but also additionality. So basically meaning, would this project have come to life if it wasn't for this revenue source from the carbon credit? So a project, yep. in, a project in Denmark would probably have a tough time getting verified because you would say, well, you can afford and you would probably be doing it anyway, planting this forest. Yeah. And then talk about that verification so that you mm -hmm. you were providing to the customer that's using your platform, you know, a, a sort of a net zero uh, a label. How's that? Ver what is that verification process so that, you know, whether it be a clean capital or a Microsoft or whoever's using the platform, I, I don't know if Microsoft's using it, whoever's using the platform can use it uh, within their own reporting. Yeah, so, so basically what we do is you, a company signs up and our, our, sweet, our sweet spot or ideal customer profile is a small mid-sized company. Yep. Um, and that's primarily because the very large companies, the enterprise level companies typically have their own projects or need more advanced travel management solutions, right? Right. So, so the, the companies that we attract to a large extent are I would say between 50 and 300 employees. You know, basically the majority of companies, right? Yeah, um, they don't have the resources to build their own they, shop. Exactly, and they don't. Yeah. They and and neither do they have the resources to do the CO two calculation because calculating your travel emissions is a bugger. How do you right, do it? Right. Well, you basically print out all your expense reports or your booking right. receipts, and then someone goes through and tries to count. Oh, I can see. You know, John flew from. Uh, the U.S. to Copenhagen, how much CO2 did that emit? So we solve yep. a problem around uh, CO2 calculation, which, and I think we'll get back to this, is going to be a big issue in the U.S. with um, U.S. SEC now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come back to that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so the CO, the travel emission calculation is a, is a value creator. Secondly, there's a real good business case to use us to pay for the removal. We have companies paying us maybe $2,000 a year for their subscription, but getting worth of $10,000, $20,000 removal credits that, that, that right. they would have had to pay themselves. Yep. And ultimately, ultimately, we do two things. Once, after we've calculated your footprint to be 500 tons from, for your business travel, we then take the commission from your hotel bookings and we then purchase the removal of 500 uh, tons of CO2. So, so you reach net zero, but we register the removal in your name. So for me as a climate entrepreneur, <laughs> whatever label you want to give me, right. um, <laughs> yeah, th this is really important because trust and transparency is what is going to fuel this industry, this new yeah, transition. And so when we yeah, so this is this is a really cool feature that we register the removal in the name of our client so they can take ownership and we provide them with an, an annual net zero travel certificate that they that can was, use. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I found that really interesting. I was looking at the different subscription levels and not only that, you can, is a company, you know, that is closing on at 50 people, you know, the having the capability to actually build out our our mechanisms to manage our scope one and two and three is it's impossible, right? You have to basically subcontract that out and find someone to do it. Yeah. The demand for that is booming. As, as you yeah. said, you know, we just had our, our SEC rules um, put out just this week uh, yeah. around ESG. It's going to be really exciting here in the States to see some of the stuff moving forward. So the demand for what you're doing is, is skyrocketing the inability for these smaller firms to actually execute on that is going to be really challenging, right? So it is. It is. do you guys see yourself moving beyond just hotel bookings into booking flights and other things, or just taking that hotel booking as the base and managing the rest of the itinerary 
carbon offset? Obviously, we want to help our clients uh, as much as we can. And if that includes yeah. helping them with the booking of their train ticket or flight, um, we're going to do it. However, most of our clients actually today tell us that they love the fact that they have freedom to book the flight directly with the airline or through yeah. their preferred platform or whatever. So it's not a huge demand. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason we would do it is because we would be able to have even more accurate uh, travel mission measurements because we would be able to go on aircraft level. Right. right. What, what kind of vessel is taking you to Copenhagen? Uh, right. how, and, and how full was it? Was it half empty or was it completely full? So, yeah. So on the, imp, on the emission uh, measurement side, it would be able to add value. Um, it, it, how much of your customer base, so I'm, there's two things I'm going to get into next. How much of your customer base is personal versus business? So I know there's, there's options. 98% of this business. Oh wow, that's exciting! Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it, it it could change if we if we chose to invest more time in building a a leisure uh, customer base, but uh, but we we solve a it's a different market though. It's it's a different market. It's a different market. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's different to book a hotel in the southern part of France than booking a hotel in Paris, right? For for a business yeah, trip. Exactly. Um, so we talked earlier about U.S. versus Europe. You mentioned offline; it's a sort of thirty percent U.S. based, seventy percent Europe. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the show about how the European market has moved ahead of us in terms of this, but that there is, you know, I think a quick scaling beginning to happen here in the U.S. You know, if you're if you're looking back in five years now, how do you see sort of see that balance? Um, and then outside of those two geographies, are you seeing any growth in in places like Asia uh, is is the, you know they they may not have the metrics in place yet, but once the SEC puts these in place, a lot yeah. of companies are going to be forced into it. Yeah, I think there there are three drivers for for demand. Um, regulation, obviously. I mean, the U.S. is now you know spearheading this. Um, Italy um, finally. <laughs> yeah, 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 finally. Yeah. Um, it, Italy mm -hmm. also took some. Um, strong moves recently um, and wrote into the constitution that companies were um, must protect people and planet. Mm, Portugal, yeah. I believe, Portugal, I believe, also has initiatives on demands for uh, business reporting on this. Um, so there is definitely, you know, rec regulation has a big role to play. Uh, supply chain too. A lot of the larger companies in Denmark, for instance have uh, had the uh, have had to do um, ESG reporting for quite some time and that has trickled down into the smaller or medium-sized companies and this is a this is this the, the supply chain effect is, is global and then thirdly I would say and this is not to be underestimated um, the personal motivation from business leaders the next generation of business leaders see business not as the end but as a means to an end and see, you know, that businesses must take on a greater responsibility. Uh, and this, so a lot of our clients, they also sign up because they are, they feel um, morally obliged. Right. Yeah. Interesting. This is also something that I see from uh, in, in the U S market, because I mean, the U S market is so big. Um, there's there's actually a lot going on on climate and impact in places like Texas, um, right? That I wouldn't have expected, but actually, you know, a lot of cool things are coming out of uh, Austin, for instance. Uh, California yep. has been California has been doing this for you know decades. Um, so it used to be a coastal ph uh, phenomena, in, at least from my point of view. Um, and now you know it's it's starting to to happen all over the U.S. But still, there are pockets in the U.S. that are as behind as some European countries. For sure, for yeah. sure. But, but the demand the demand's moving, and I think that you know I think companies also recognize that their employees are demanding this within their own structure. Um, as there's, especially now, they're starting to pick the business travel back up. So, one final question: um, What's been harder, healthcare or climate? From a company, <laughs> from a startup perspective, I would say equally as hard, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm interested I, in that. 
I, I started my first company, Healthy Company it was called, in 2006. We, we had two fantastic years. And then came the financial crisis in 08, right. <laughs> which was like right. a, le a lesson. And I really, I really had to mobilize my, you know, um, you know, education in the will of force and just uh, grinding on. And we ended up successfully exiting that in, in 2011, which was like a huge accomplishment. Um, and then we started Good Wings and then came COVID. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> Don't start yeah. any more companies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. You're, causing, you're causing global trends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, I would say equally hard, but I think what is enormously rewarding um, with Good Wings is that it resonates so well with our clients. Um, right. We have literally, we have like a 30% win chance from a demo. I mean, the companies that, that meet us, that go to our website and books a demo, why would they not do it? It's super affordable yeah. and it's, it solves like a list of problems. Absolutely. Well, to, to, to do that, go to goodwings.com, right? Yeah, goodwings.com, yeah. Yeah, um, I know you guys have a moonshot goal of, um, of turning a billion trips net zero in 10 years. Let's hope we get there. Uh, and hopefully Clean Capital and others can be part of that. Uh, Christian, thank you so much for joining us at Clean Capital. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. And thanks to your team, uh, specifically Josephine, for her patience in getting this booked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And our producer, Colin Young, as always, for putting these episodes together. You can learn more at goodwings.com and you can get more episodes of Experts Only at cleancapital.com. Uh, thanks so much again. And I hope you, uh, hope you continue the conversation.